listening to Two Babies in a Business, a podcast about business, marketing, growth, strategy, staff, clients, babies, and marriage. I'm Christina with the handsome Peter Polarski, and we are founders and leaders of CIPR Communications. And I guess I could like add like budget um, as we talk about budget to that intro uh, over the next couple of episodes. But today, Peter, how are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm good. Um, so today we are talking all about the sales funnel. And I feel like for me, who's someone who's not on the sales side of our company, it's often one that like glazes over me a bit. So I thought uh, in true Christina fashion, I would share a bit of a definition. Okay, go for it. <laughs> so a sales funnel is a step-by-step -step process that allows you to bring a potential customer lead one step closer to your offer and a buying decision through a series of marketing actions. And marketing actions are all those tactics we talked about last series of podcasts. So emails, videos, articles, landing pages, um, which potentially do the selling for you, um, but sometimes don't. Um, but that's a funnel, right? So you know, think about throwing someone down a funnel or down a water slide. Um, you know, as you get further down, obviously the faster you're going to drop, but those initial, I think about, you know, those um, little coin mm -hmm. things at the library, mm -hmm. like the kids put the coins in and they go around that big yeah. funnel all the way in and they love watching it. But, you know, when you're on the outside, it's obviously a longer process and you're talking and you know that piece and then as that coin gets closer to the middle it's going faster and drops into the bottom so you know think of a funnel sales funnel literally like a funnel yeah yeah and uh so obviously when we're talking about this this is a little bit more digital marketing focused um although not it doesn't have to be uh right because uh but really this is sort of you know, the sales funnel in terms of like people going on your website and reading about you and then maybe reading a case study and then maybe at some point having a conversation with a, with a salesperson, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, I mean, it's a little bit different, obviously, from, uh, uh, you know, if you're running a retail store and somebody's coming into your, uh, into your location, although that's usually the last step of a sales funnel, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, whether they've searched like new shirts on google and then found your store through google my business listing or they saw a billboard that said cool shirts or they were hit with a ad on instagram about cool shirts i mean we often talk about internally like all the all the different directions you need to give someone a chance to get to your house and so you know if i'm telling someone like um, Michelle from Kamloops, how to get to our house. It's going to look a lot different because she might be hopping in a car on a highway trip or on a plane. But if I'm telling someone like Paul who lives down the street to us how to get to our house, it's going to look a lot different. So, you know, if you think about a billboard as different directions and your social, um, yeah. all those things are part of the funnel. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's a lot that goes into, this is a pretty loaded one uh, in terms of topics um, and it's not a, it's not an easy one. Right. And I think this is probably an area where um, people really struggle. Um, but really when it comes to your budget and your sales funnel, um, you really need to understand. Um, I like, let, well, first of all, before I get into that, I'm going to just say that right now the business to consumer B2C and business to business worlds in terms of sales and marketing are really merging into kind of the same um, and, you know, there's some great stats out there, like uh, the average buyer spends 70% uh, online um, doing research prior to ever talking to a salesperson. So it really does kind of talk about the importance of a strong online presence, whether that be your social media, uh, whether that be your billboards or whatever. Uh, but fundamentally, then, you know, it comes down to your website um, and really kind of bringing people through this journey on your website. And so one of the um, kind of questions that I like um, that my friend Marty Gray from SiteTuner um, kind of always leads with is, what's the economic value of your website? And usually people are like, what does that even mean? <laughs> so really that means, um, okay, so if people are using your website to look, to research you or to buy from you directly if you're an e-commerce site or to decide to buy from you if you're in a sales process, um, you know, like what... Uh, 
how much how much say how much sales does your website generate for you right so it really if you think about the funnel um you know basically you have a lot of top of funnel visitors so people that visit your website um and then um those people kind of qualify themselves through your website through the different things they they read and look at um and then eventually they become kind of a sales lead right sales qualified lead, lead sql right so so you really got to think about how many people are coming to your website um and then that number gets broken down to a smaller number which is how many of those people are filling out your form or making a phone call and and or you know becoming kind of a lead um, and then, you know, then you're going through a bit of a sales process and then how many of those do you, do you close? Right. And that's really kind of, those are very, in a very basic way, some of the steps in that sales funnel. And you really need to understand, I think one of the things that a lot of people do wrong is, uh, especially when they're starting marketing is, you know, Hey, well, you know, it cost me $5,000 to get a bunch of traffic to my website and I closed $5,000 worth of business. Therefore, um, therefore this wasn't an effective marketing program. And it's like, well, but like, what is the lifetime value of that customer? Right. So, you know, I'm going to use Shane from tire force as an example. Um, he basically has a mobile tire, uh, swapping, um, and repair service. Um, so winter tires come to your house, swap them out, you know, for him, um, once you become a customer, you know, it's likely there's a high retention rate for yeah. customers. So for him, you know, the number of people you convert in year one isn't necessarily a true um, distinct, a true sort of, a true um, uh, metric, metric, because it's really like, okay, if you do, okay, so a person comes in through your website, through a, you know, a, a, a PPC uh, lead, uh, and then if they become a customer and they come to you two, two times per year, and then every th three years they buy tires, well, that's a whole different conversation than, oh, well, they came and I switched their tires once, right? So you really got to understand kind of the economics of your sales process from the very beginning to the very end. And what is a typical uh, deal and value? How, what is the lifetime value of that deal? How many leads do you need on your website? How many of those leads do you convert into opportunities? How many opportunities can your business handle? Um, like, so like for, I'm going to use CIPR as an example, as opposed to a tire force. I mean, a tire force has three or four trucks running around the city. You know, they can have all, multiple customers at a time. Whereas for CIPR, we can probably only onboard three to five customers a month. And that's like way, that's going to make us very stretched, right? <laughs> so, you know, you really need to understand your business and the mechanics and the, and the, and the math around all aspects of your business um, to really get a true understanding of uh, the co your sales funnel and what it costs you to, 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 to generate business. Yeah. I always say like for me and this is the hard part, right? So it's like getting down and dirty into the data. So, you know, to sum up what you just said, those key questions you should be asking yourself are like, so one, I think your, your website is probably your safest metric that you actually have some data on and can look at. So how many site visits are you getting in a month? Okay. Yeah. Look, write that down. How many of those site visits actually are converting to leads. So how many people are filling out a form or calling or doing those actionables that are important to you? Yeah. And then how many of those leads are actually qualified leads? Yeah. So there's your other metric. So now you've written down three numbers, hopefully. And then if you now start to reverse engineer, so like what is the cost of those qualified leads? So, you know, okay, how much have you spent? Sure. Yes. Google, if you're doing PPC, Google spit out, you know, a number per lead, but were they all qualified? You don't know. So you've got to get your calculator out, sharpen your pencil a little bit. And then how many leads actually convert to opportunities? So just because they're a lead doesn't, and a qualified lead doesn't necessarily mean they're going to become a customer. Sometimes the timing isn't right, or sometimes they're early in their research or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, like you said, what, it, what's that overarching value? So, I mean, one important metric for us is, okay, if someone comes to us and we're building a website for them, there's hopefully, as long as the relationship is established and there's a good personality fit between us and the client, there's a, a longer lifetime value. Cause you know, we then start to build the relationship and work on strategy together and potentially some tactics and we move forward a relationship that way. Um, so think about those things too in your business. Okay. Um, are you, uh, into hardwood flooring? Okay. You've, you've done a repair job for someone. 
chances are that person's always going to come to you. Um, but how long is it going to be until they come back? And then what are the other mechanisms? You know, how are you nurturing them? And then are you uh, allowing them or empowering them to refer uh, and review? Yeah. So lots to think about from a sales funnel perspective. And there's probably a couple other questions out there too, like uh, what percentage of like sales or new sales in your business? What percentage or what opportunities are there for upselling? So if somebody comes in, when you use Shane from the entire force again, you know, maybe I, well, I'm a, we're a perfect example as his clients. Hey, Shane, we need your tires swapped. Oh, by the way, we also need win new winter tires. So that's a whole different kind of conversation, a different math around that. What are the opportunities for reoccurring sales? Um, so maybe if you're an e-commerce website, you sell a widget or you sell a shirt or whatever, maybe you can sell five more. Um, you know, so there's sort of a whole bunch of different sort of considerations depending on the type of business you're in, right? And so um, I think this is kind of where, um, you know, really where we're such advocates of the digital marketing blueprint um, because we ask all these questions and usually people don't know the answers. And usually that's where we get into some really deep thinking and deep diving. I think it's a really exciting opportunity to really dissect your business, um, to really understand the mechanics of kind of what's going on. And, you know, and then if, if, and then it's like, okay, so then, you know, there's the cost, the marketing costs when it comes to um, generating all this new business. Uh, but then there's sort of something that a lot of people overlook as an opportunity, which is, you know, conversion rate optimization. So, um, what if your website can convert 25% better? That means that every single dollar you've just spent bringing somebody to your website will convert 25% better. So the economics on a good, well-converting website are massive. <laughs> and it means that your marketing spend is that much more efficient, right? So that's a little bit sort of deeper down the conversation. But, um, you know, your, it could be your, that your sales funnel today um, and your cost of marketing today. And then, you know, you can make investments to make your marketing more efficient over time as well. Totally. So to sum up before the next episode, everyone go look at your numbers and figure out exactly how much money from a marketing perspective, it costs you to get that new client or that new customer, um, by asking yourself some of the questions we did, um, because you can't just pull a marketing budget out of thin air. You, you have to, uh, just because $2,000 feels right doesn't yeah. mean it yeah. is right. So go back, start digging into the data and start to really understand what that lead and then what that customer actually costs you and what the potential they have for future sales or business or repeats or whatever it might be. So get down into the data. And then next time we'll start talking about kind of understanding what other costs to consider. Yeah. And before we go, I want to just make one more point here is the value of doing this exercise for your business. And I'm just going to use an example without a name is one of our current clients um, has sort of two aspects of their business. And one aspect of their business is a very high margin business, um, obviously more expensive to get customers. And the other aspect of their business is a very low margin business. And they actually did a very deep analysis. They had some consultants come in and they actually ended up shutting down the low margin cost part of their business because they realized that they're actually subsidizing their entire operation yeah. because they weren't actually making money when they started drilling down in terms of the time it took to make a sale and the kinds of the, the size of sale they were making. They were like, this is crazy. And they literally shut that part of their business down and completely refocused their attention as a business. And so this is a worthwhile thing doing, even if you're not planning to make massive marketing investments. Like this is like kind of like the nuts and bolts of your business. Yeah. So, you know, I really recommend taking the time and going through this thoroughly. Yeah. And I would say, you know, to echo what you said before, a little bit of shameless self-promotion, but if this is completely overwhelming to you, um, then call one of us, shoot us a message because you're absolutely right, Peter. Like what we do with clients through the digital marketing blueprint perspective is ask these questions and yeah really facilitate that conversation for you internally about, you know, <laughs> how much are we spending now and is it worth it? And, you know, getting to some of these drivers of low margin versus high margin services and business. So yeah. this is something we can help with. And I don't think all marketing agencies necessarily do that, but um, it's really worth your time, your effort. And I think if you invest up front in understanding your sales funnel, you know, you're going to have a more successful marketing budget and the marketing strategy and program moving forward. And as a more successful business, frankly. Totally. 
Well, on that note. Toodaloo, everybody. <laughs> Toodaloo.